right thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, to revive means to to quicken, uh, to stir up, to 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 bring back to life. Amen. And we are really stirring up uh, the faith and stirring up the spirit. Uh, and it was just a wonderful beginning. Now, I don't want anybody to uh, to get uh, confused because uh, the Lord is having His way. Amen. So it doesn't matter about, you know, it's good to have great expectations, but it's also good to have great flexibility. <laughs> well, I like that. It's great to have great expectations, but also uh, it's great to have great flexibility because God is truly having his way. We already know that we expect great things to happen. Amen? Amen. But but how he's going to do it, you know, the Lord can, what they say, change on a dime. He can tell you to turn on a dime. So it's all going to be good. Oh, look at that. See, wait a minute. I just, I just, I just said it, and all of a sudden, here comes. Uh, now, you talk about a supernatural event. There it is right there. Let's pray and let's get started. Father, we bless you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. And we thank you, Lord God. Have your will and have your way. Lead and guide us all throughout this night and all throughout this uh, revival today. We pray that you would be glorified in the way that you want to minister to us and what you want to show us and how you want to show it to us and anoint our ears to hear. Thank you for those who are online listening all over the country, all over the world. Thank you for those who are here in the sanctuary listening. Thank you for those who are on the way and they're ready to listen. Lord God, we have a heart to receive and we give you thanks, we give you honor, we give you praise. We stand on the Ephesians 3.20 blessing. That you're going to do what? Exceeding abundantly above all that we could imagine. According to the power of your spirit that works in, with, and through us. In Jesus' name. And let the people of God say, Amen. Give God another hand of praise. Amen. Bless the Lord on my soul. Well, uh, we're going to, uh, last night I think God was giving us some direction. And the direction was, even though I, as the senior pastor, uh, have people assigned uh, to do things, uh, to, to minister or to testify, whatever they want to do. They, they get up and sing if they want to. But, but, but minister, teach, testify, preach, uh, sing, whatever, as long as it's holy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I had a lot of time set out for people last night, but the Lord showed me something, and that was... I had to live exactly what I always tell you all. That's what? Be ready. Be ready. Don't get ready. Be ready. Be ready. You know, when you're in war, you can't, you can't be trying to get ready. You better be locked and loaded, right? So last night, uh, people were a little shorter than I thought, which left time on the clock. And y'all know you can't do that with the pastor. Leave time on the clock. You can't do that. You give me some time on the clock. I got, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get some more time. So anyway. The, the, that was a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to set the foundation for this revival. I've been to revivals and I've been to some revivals and I mean, oh my goodness, there was a lot of music, there was a lot of shouting, there was a lot of excitement, and there's nothing wrong with all that. But the, but the Lord had a word for us and I have never heard it on that wise. When people talk about revival because actually he gave me the word two weeks ago. He whispered in my ear and he said, I want you to know there is no revival without repentance. <laughs> There's no true revival without repentance. Amen. No true revival without repentance. In fact, that's really the problem with this country. We've never had national repentance. We, we, don't, we don't have national repentance. Uh, it's going to take Jesus to, to bring it, but that's all right. In the meantime, we're going to have it right here. TLCC. So there's a couple of things I want to do really, really quickly. And don't worry. Everybody who's assigned to preach tonight, teach tonight, you're going to have your requisite time. No problem. But I do believe that God is telling me as the lead pastor to lay some foundation. So the first foundation I want to lay, lay is the first uh, 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 the first email, Joseph. Let's hear it from Joseph on the slide. This young man, I'm telling you, hey, Joseph, Brother, you, 
God is getting ready to bless you beyond you can imagine. So let's go back to Psalm 51. And while he's going to Psalm 51, which is that first email I sent to Joseph. There you go. Put the piece. Quick on the draw. Look at that. Here's the thing I want you to get. Uh, turn to Psalm 51, and we're going to pray, and then we're going to get started. Father, again, I bless you and praise you. Thank you for this opportunity to handle your word, and thank you for the opportunity to lay some foundation uh, as the uh, ministers on staff will come and will minister. But I do thank you for this opportunity to uh, kind of create uh, the atmosphere, the spiritual climate of what I believe you want us to learn and do and embrace here at Truth and Love and all over the airwaves, all over uh, the internet. So we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I want to give you a little recap, and then I want to get to this. Here's the recap. Last night, as I told you, I said that there's no revival without repentance. And repentance means a change of mind. It means a change, therefore, also of direction. You know, when people say things like, well, I repented, I did a 360, uh, that, that's, that's incorrect. <laughs> that's not repentance. If you did 360, you did like this. You did, you did a whole circle, and you right pointed the same direction you were pointing it. That's not repentance. Repentance is if you point in this direction, you do a 180. Now you're going to totally, see, now I'm facing the cross. Now I'm going right to the cross. You see, that's repentance. Repentance is when you totally change your will, your ways uh, to God's way. Now, uh, last night I was telling you about David. And David, we all know, was the great king of the Jews, right? But David was also um, part of his experience was not just as a king. You know the three main offices, king, prophet, and priest. But it seemed like David was always trying to kind of be a priest because he was eating the show bread from the priest and he was trying to hang, you know, where the priests were hanging. Amen. But he definitely was a prophet. And, uh, in fact, he had some of the most important prophecies. Uh, for example, uh, Psalm 22, where he prophesied Jesus' crucifixion, his betrayal and his crucifixion. But this particular uh, psalm by David, and it's both personal but also prophetic. It's prophetic because David, in going through his own repentance, wrote this so that it would be in the Bible so that we too could refer to it and repent as needed. Now, if, if no one has ever told you on this wise, uh, then I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, you, you need to, you must, like they said, Jesus must needs go through Samaria. You must needs learn about Psalm 51. If you ask people in the church, what's their favorite Psalm? And more than likely, more likely than not, they'll say Psalm 23. Okay, praise the Lord. It's a great song. David wrote that one too. But let me tell you something. In your life, not only are you going to need Psalm 23, but you, you must need Psalm 51. Amen. You're going to have to stop there sometime in your life. Right. In fact, you're going to have to stop there a few times in your life. You're going to have to make that stop. It's like a filling station. You're going to have to make that stop a few times on your journey with Jesus. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. In other words, uh, to, to put it in really plain terms, it is the what? It is the repentance song. Yeah. It is the repentance song. Yeah. And as I told you last night, David had a lot to repent for. Yeah. He was an adulterer, excuse me, and then a murderer. Uh -huh. And he had a lot to repent for about that. But then I also told you something else. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 22, God ends up saying, David is a man after my own heart. But I left a little part out of the B section of 1322. For he will fulfill all my will. In other words, he'll do what I tell him to do. See, David, David might have messed up, but he fessed up. And that's the same thing I'm telling us all. Please, please, please don't think for one moment that uh, this is not a a celebrating church. Don't think that one for one moment this is not an encouraging church. But I'm here to tell you that the greatest encouragement and celebration is when you are real with God. Yeah. 
Amen. Then you can, the Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. And, and uh, the Bible also says that God doesn't look on the outward. He looks at the heart. But now we use David as another example. When David was first anointed, what happened? He had seven brothers. Right. And Samuel went through, through, through all the brothers, from the oldest to the youngest. They were all in the house. He said, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. And they said, well, wait, wait a minute. You went through all the seven. It's got to be one of them. You saying that it's this house, God, the Spirit led you to Jesse's house to anoint the next king of Israel. Surely it's got to be one of these seven. And then he said, well, do you have any other sons? He said, I got one more. He's out in the field. He's a little ruddy guy, a little, little short guy. And he's out there, you know, with the sheep, spelling like sheep. And he, you know, he's not much to look at. Basically, his father was dissident. His father was looking at the outward. Because the other ones were taller and more handsome and all this stuff. But his father was looking at the outward. And when David came on in, Samuel said, that's him. See, Samuel was looking in the spirit. He said, that's him. He said, give me that oil. Give me that, give me that, give me that oil right now. Give me that oil. Let me pour it on his head. And it run down his head because he is anointed as the next king of Israel. And then the scripture says it like this. It is he that will be the next king. For God does not look on the outward. He looks at the what? He looks at the heart. That's why the scripture says, for David is a man after God's own heart. God looks at the heart. And that's what we're, we're, we're doing here this week. We are looking at the heart. We're This thing about letting God use you. I, I mean, when you really think about it, the, the let is your control. It's your control divine. You're in control. And you can let or you can let not. You can let God use you or you can let not God use you. And it all has to do with what's on the inside of you. So I got something I want to share with you to lay the, to the, the groundwork for tonight and for the rest of the week. That uh, it, it, It's just the complement of what I was talking about last night. So let's turn to Psalm 51. And I'm not going to go through the whole psalm. You know, the whole psalm talks about uh, 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 wash me thoroughly for my iniquities. I've sinned against you and against you only. But I want to slip down to verse number 6 because I made a statement last night that is very important. And I want everybody who is a member, uh, a, a follower, or a friend of this ministry to get this in their heart. When you get this in your heart, it's a game changer. And what was the statement I made? I made this statement. The children of God, the people in the kingdom of God, we are called to live inside out and not outside in. Yes. When you get this and that revelation hits you, it's a game changer. The world lives outside in. Well, what's the stock market doing? What happened with the election? What, what, what are the white people doing? What are the black people doing? What the, are what the Rams doing? What the, you know, I mean, people who are not walking according to faith, they're always living outside in. You know, what's my wife doing? What's my husband doing? What are my children doing? What's my boss doing? What pastor doing? See, it's not about what's happening outside of you. It's about what's happening inside of you. And Cynthia, I have to give you some big props because... I was kind of, I told you I got to go back and listen to your message again, but I was, I had some things that I had to deal with administratively while you were talking. And even though you didn't talk maybe as long as I wanted you to talk, there were some things that you said that were very popular. One of the things you said that blessed me because you're a good student of the teachings of this ministry. And you hit one of the most important statements, one of the most important statements that I've ever said in this ministry, and that is God is not as much concerned about changing what's around you as much as he is changing what's inside you. In other words, instead of you trying to get God to change your circumstances, God wants to change you. Yeah, now, I'm paraphrasing. You paraphrase me, and I'm paraphrasing you. But that's really what it came down to. We always are looking for God. Change this. Change, change my job. Hmm. Change my income. Change my boss. Change my dog, change my frog, you know, it, change, change, it, you try, and, and by the way, while you had it, and God, you change. You know, and by the way, God, why don't you change? You, you ain't doing me right. You change. The Lord said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. Amen. He said, I'm not changing. He said, you're the one that needs to change. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's really true. Once Amen. we change, everything changes. Yep. 
But the only way we true change, somebody say true change, true change. is inside out. It's not a, boy, I feel so much better. I, bought, I got some new perfume. Well, praise the Lord for new perfume. You won't be talking about it next year, but it, it's, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, oh, I got some beautiful things for Christmas. Oh, praise God for that. That's really nice. But that's, you know, but then you'll be wanting something else next Christmas. But the real change is on the inside. And when Amen. something happens to you on the inside, and you really get it, and you really say, that's it, I'm done, I'm done with that. It's like a lot of Christians, you know, they, they, they say yes to Jesus, but they struggle to be in church on Sunday morning. Because before Jesus, they were out partying and stuff on Saturday night, and then they say yes to Jesus, but they, they somehow they, the, the change didn't really take, because they're still struggling to get up on Sunday to come to church. And then, well, you know, COVID, the, the remnants of COVID might still be around. I don't know. Maybe it's not safe to go. Yeah, but you can go anywhere else you want to go. Amen. I said you can go anywhere else you want to go. Amen. Just have, just have somebody say the party jumping off over here at XYZ Street. You'd be like, well, what, what time is it? What time is it start? You know? You'd be ready to go. And if you can't get a ride, you'd be like, well, you know, they got Lyft, Uber. Uber. They got, you know, Goober. They got it right. You, you know, you find a way to get there. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. You will find a way. But when it comes to, so you have to get that change. Somebody say change the heart. Change the heart. Mm -hmm. All right. David, Psalm 51, verse 6. It says, behold. Somebody say, behold. behold. I love that word, behold. behold. If you, I want you to think about this. The next time you're studying the Bible and you see that word, I want you to remember this tonight. That word, very important. It, it implies to me, I want God to say, I want you to see something in the spirit. In other words, I want you to look more closely at it through the eyes of the spirit. Don't just, you, you know how you can just see something? You know, oh, God just saw something. But it, it's like the word. You can look at the word, you can glance at it and not see anything. But when you behold, then you really see it. Yes. So he says, behold. Somebody say, look more closely. Look say, look in the spirit. In the spirit. He, said, he said, David is saying to the Lord, you desire truth in the inward parts. There it is. Yes. There it is. Now, if you turn it around, you get my most favorite word in the whole Bible. I. God says, I desire what? Truth. Right. In the inward part. Isn't that something? Say, God, God desires truth God. in the inward part. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Ooh. Just got a, just got a, what's the name of this church? Truth, truth and, love. and love. What's God saying? He said, yeah, y'all, get them. Okay, I'm going back down 23, don't, 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 don't let me go to 23, 23. Oh, 20, at the 23, 23 street, I'm going to leave that for you. But listen, he's saying, He's saying, if it's true, it's got to take place in the end of life. So if this church is truth and love, it's not just, can't just be truth and love in name. Yes. It's got to happen in the end of life. Now, the good news about that, if it happens in the end of life, it'll eventually show out. But I said we're living inside out, not outside in. We're not just, oh, yeah, we're truth and love, we're truth and love. But, but then when you shine the light on the end of life, no truth and no word in there. No obedience in there. No submission in there. That's the inward part. That's the inward part. He said, you desire, he talked about the Lord, but God, man, you know God was talking to this man. He didn't, I mean, he wasn't, you know, filled with the spirit as we know, but God put his spirit on him. He said, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Not, in other words, not, not man's wisdom, but God's wisdom. Not my mind, but my heart. Yes. Then he says, purge me with hyssop, yes. and I shall be clean. Yes. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Of course, we know that's talking about cleansing from sin. Remember he said, though your sins be as red as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Next Next, next verse, next verse, next verse. You with me, Joseph? Next verse. Now go 
school on you. You got me, Joseph? Verse number, if anybody has it, no, 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 next verse. Anybody has it, go on and shout it out. What's, what's the next verse after verse 7? What does it say? Say it loud. It, you know what? Here we go. Here we go. Just read it for me. Let me hear joy. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Make me hear joy and gladness. That the bones you have broken may rejoice. Good God Almighty, Captain. You've got the mic on that scripture. He says, He says, I'm gonna bring joy out of the, out of those broken bones. He said, make me hear joy and gladness. In other words, God, I'm, I'm giving you permission to turn uh, what might be feel bad or what might be bad consequences, and you're going to bring joy out of it. Yes. Amen. Somebody say, God, God you, can, you can and you will, and you will turn, what turn what was evil into good, into good. what was sorrow in the joy. Give God some praise. That's what he's going to do. He said, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Now, let me give you to the big, big, big part here. Here we go. Here we go. Next, next verse. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Now this is this is very important because the Bible says that sin separates us from God. Can I get an amen? Now we know that Jesus caused us to be reunited with God because his blood sacrifice paid for our sin. But how many of you know that even after you come into Christ, you can sin? Yeah. And if you don't repent from your sin, the Bible says, I'm, I'm thinking right off the top of my head, First uh, Peter chapter 3, it says that, that uh, your unrighteousness can hinder your prayers. Can I get an amen? Yeah. We talk, we talk to born again folks. We talk to right. believers. Right. Unrighteousness can hinder your prayers. So in essence, for us who are restored, reconciled, reunited with God through Christ, the sin doesn't keep us out of heaven, but it sure is an impediment to our communication with God. Amen. It's an impediment to our communion with God. And, I, and, and somebody said, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, you know how if you have a problem with somebody and then you're not in communication with them, you're not talking with them, you know, it, 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 no word has to be said. It's just nobody's, nobody's talking. That's that's how that sin does. It's, it messes up your prayer life. Now here is where I want to go. Here's where I want to go. Here we go. Here we go. Next verse. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. In other words, once I repent, you will restore. Once I repent, you will restore. Once I truly repent, because you see my heart. Other people can't see it, but you can really tell when I'm, when I'm telling the truth. He said, you desire truth in the inward part. So when I really am sorry, how many of you know the Bible says there's, a, there's, a, there's two types of repentance? There's a true repentance and a fake repentance. It says, it says godly uh, 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 sorrow leads up to repentance. Yes. In other words, there's two types of sorrow. There's a true sorrow and then there's a pro forma sorrow. Yeah. A lot of folk are sorry when they get caught. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry, I'm so, but they don't, they don't really mean it. Right. They don't mean it to the point of changing. Right. They're sorry that, you know, you got caught, they got caught, right. and so, well, you know, I'm so sorry. I won't do it next time, at least you won't find out, but you know what I mean? But, but the Bible says that godly sorrow leads unto repentance.
Say amen. amen. You, you know, all these roads are leading to one place. And that's obedience. Amen. They're all leading to obedience. And I'm telling you, when we obey God, we, we, we can't even begin to imagine the blessings that he's going to put on us. Amen. He's going to overtake us. with. That's what he said. He's going to overtake us and overshower us with blessings. So you may say, Pastor, uh, this thing about repentance, it sure is a sobering word. It doesn't seem very uplifting. But if you, if you embrace it, it's the most uplifting message I could ever tell you. When you repent and you're right with God, everything in your life is going to be all right. He's going to open up the flood, look like, like this is a, a lever. He's going to look like this. He's going to open up the gate, and the water is going to gush out. The blessings, the favor, the love is going to gush out on you, and you're going to be sitting up there like, whoo, whoa, wow, I've never, I've never, what is I've never seen it on this wise. I've never felt it like this. I, I, I never felt love like this, and I've never seen favor like this, and I've never had joy like this. This is incredible. What they say, this joy that I have, come on, somebody, it's going to be incredible. And it all comes from repentance. Restore to me, there it is, the joy of your salvation. What is up with Christians walking around and have no joy? <laughs> They got no joy. Come on. No joy. Come on. Supposed Come on. to be supposed to be the light of the world and got no joy. Right. So then he says, watch this. He says, uh, I will restore to you the joy of salvation, and I'll uphold you by my free or generous spirit. And then lastly, verse 13, he says, Then he says, after you restored me, after you have reconciled me, after you have revived me, yes. then I will teach others your ways, yes. and sinners shall be converted to you. In other words, if, if once I repent, I repent, you restore, and then here comes the fruit. Here comes the use. We're talking about God, let God use you. And once you repent, what God does is he restores, he refills, and then he says, now get on out there and win, and win the game. Get, 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 on, get off the bench and go on. You know, timeout is over. You, you, you know, time out enough. Now get back in there and fight. Get back in there and win. And, 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 and lead somebody to the Lord. Give God some praise. I just want to end with this. You know, um, sometimes people say, Pastor, I don't know about you, Pastor. You always getting up in the sanctuary and telling everybody about you going out there and winning people to the Lord. I, you know, I don't know about you. You always telling people you how many of you this and how many that you boasting on. Well, yeah, I'm boasting all right. I'm boasting on the Lord. Because yeah, I'm so happy that the joy of the Lord is bubbling over. It involves me, but it's not me. Yeah. It's not me. It's just that I made some adjustments and the floodgates open. So then he's just, he needs somebody to tell him. I mean, good Lord, why not me? Yeah. And why not you? Yeah. So, so, so I just want you to know that when you hear me talking about this, I'm, I'm basically living this out. This is the natural consequences of repentance. If I go to God and I say, God, where did I miss it? What, what's wrong? What do I need to do? And God said, this is what you need to do. Now start doing it. You need to go and read that chapter today. This is what you need to do. You need to fast every week. This is what you need to do. You need to forgive and you need to ask for forgiveness. This is what you need to do. You mean I got to go to that person? I got to tell him, yeah, you need to do it. That's what you got to do. So you humble yourself and you do it. And then he says, let the flood come. Let it come. Let it come. I want to end with this. I want to end with this because, like I said, if you, if you accuse me, <laughs> they put had Jesus in that kangaroo court and they said, you, you said you would you know, destroy the temple in the three days you would rebuild it. He said, I'll say it. <laughs> in other words, I resemble that remark. You say, Pastor, you always talk about how God using you and you talk about how many people came to the Lord and all this other stuff. And, and, and please don't listen to me. If I say how many people uh, I, I led to the Lord, I'm saying I led them. But don't get it twisted. God saved them. Yes. I didn't save anybody. Yes. I, don't get, I, don't, I don't save anybody. God does the convicting. God does the converting. Amen. But really, if I get myself right and repent, you know what God really does? 
He does the prep, pre preparing. He does the convicting even in advance, meaning that he he gets the person ready for me yeah. to talk to them. Yeah, so I got to end with this yeah. one today, and then we're going to bring up our speakers. I'm, I actually um, was just giving them enough time to get seated and get warmed up and get you all here. But I got to end with this today because this is a good example of how the Lord will have his way when he's uh, working with a clean vessel. If he's working with a clean pipe, the water's going to flow. I'm telling you, so I don't know about y'all, but I have had situations at my house where my sink would get clogged up. And I mean, I sometimes I try to drain them and everything else, and it just ain't going to work. Because there's some hair and some stuff in there, and I got to just get down there. I don't want to do it, but I got to get down there under that sink. Come on, Brother Cap. And I got to take that thing off and screw that thing off, and then get in there and get that gook and that hair and that stuff off. And, and brother, I'm telling you, once you get that thing, once you yeah. get that pipe clean, and once you get it open, then the water can just flow. And if, it, and if it's not like that, it just backs up, and all it does is frustrate you. So today uh, I was out and uh, my wife asked me to do something for her. And she asked me to uh, make sure I checked on her tires. And so I threw her car and I checked on her tires. And when I checked on her tires, I said, oh, she doesn't have the caps on her tubes, on her tires. No wonder her tires are a little low because the caps are not on there. So I said to myself, self, I need to go to the auto zone to get, and it's interesting how this happened. Actually, it was the spirit that said it to me. He said, go to the auto zone and give her some caps. She didn't ask me to do it, but you know, good husband does it. But we'll give her some caps for these tools. And the spirit didn't say, go to the auto store. It said, go to the auto zone. It was specific. It was specific. <laughs> And then I Googled, I said, where's the closest auto zone? It was like right there on the line. So I went right there on the line. Long story short, I get there, and I said, let me get in here and get out of the line. So I get on to the front of the line. I grab some armor off, and I went to the front of the line. I said, uh, excuse me, miss, where are the caps for the tires? And she said, okay, it's right down there. Ow. Now, I was at the front of the line. I had been waiting for a while. So I got there. I said, okay, mama, I'm going to go right there and come right get yeah, Just right, literally, the aisle was right there. So I went to get that, got it right there, so carry on, get back. So I get back to the front, get my place. I went back there, got somebody walked right up there and got right with the lady in the line where I was. And I said, okay, it must not be meant for me to go in this line. So I waited for a second, and all of a sudden, this guy opens the line over there. So then I walk over there. Now I'm at the man's line. This was a woman, and she has another guy in front of her, in front of me. And now I go to the man's line. I go to the man's line, and I say to him, hey, how you doing? Thank you. Listen, I said, oh, boy, it's a nice day. We had a nice rain, and now we're over with the rain and everything. <sighs> Praise the Lord for that. And he said, yeah, that's a blessing. <laughs> Locate. He said, blessing. Now I got to, I got to follow yeah. up and see what... I said, oh, so you 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 love the Lord? You know the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, yeah. He said, I said, so he said, yeah, I love God. I said, praise God. I said, what's your faith? He said, I'm Catholic. I said, okay. I said, have you prayed the sinner's prayer? Have you prayed the prayer of salvation? Amen. He said, I said, listen, I can help you. Let me, I said, let, let me, that's what I'm saying that a lot to people now. Let me help you. Somebody say, let me help you. See, that's an old move. See, see, because when you say, let me help you, what you're saying is, I can help you. I said, let me help you. It'll take just one minute. And you know what he said? Yes. He said, okay. See, sometimes, you know, the devil, what did we talk about last night? You either activate your faith or you activate your what? You fear. Yeah. And the devil will have you sit up there thinking, oh, no, I can't ask him. He's up there. He's busy. He's working or whatever. But you don't know if you don't ask. So I said, let me help you. Let me. I said, it'll take less than a minute. Let me lead you in this prayer. And he said, okay. You know, that's God. Right. He went. He took.
took me from that line to this line because he knew that that was the man that was ready. He what God had prepared in his heart and he gave his life to the Lord. Can I get an amen and praise the Lord? But I got to tell you this to give you the little icing on the cake. So I said something to this man that I've been saying lately to a lot of people. I said, I said, what is today? I said, what's today's date? November 10th. He said, November 10th. I said, don't ever forget this date. I said, because this is your spiritual birthday. Amen. I said, you have a natural birthday. I said, but don't ever forget this day because this is your spiritual birthday. And you know what he said? He said, I won't. He said, because actually, today is my birthday. Hey. I said, what? He said, yeah, today is my birthday. Well, happy birthday. You just got saved. I said, you realize that? I said, so your natural birthday and your spiritual birthday on this out of minister to many people. I've never had that happen to me. So I just wanted to share that with you. Both of his birthdays, natural and spiritual, today. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. We're so excited. Um, 